All right, so the purpose of this video is to give you just a brief introduction into the next book you're reading, The Other West More. Um, I wanted to give you an introduction to it because if there's some things you don't know about the book before you start reading it, it can be a little confusing to follow. The main reason why is this book is a true story, and it follows the lives of two men, both with the same name. Both guys are named Wes Moore. The man who wrote the book is named Wes Moore, and he tells his story, but he also tells a story about another man by the name of Wes Moore. Um, the author is a very successful man. Uh, he's married, college educated, and he was a Rhodes Scholar, went to Oxford over in England. He served in the military. Uh, well, the other guy named Westmore is in prison for life, for murder. Uh, the other thing about these two guys is that they both started in roughly the same types of circumstances. They both grew up poor in the inner city. They both grew up without fathers. They both struggled in school, had early run-ins with the law. So one of the questions that this book sort of tries to deal with is, how? How does this happen? How can two people here in America be born into the same circumstances and have their lives go in completely different directions? So again, this is a true story. And just real quick, the the background behind it is the man who wrote the book, Wes, the author, he heard a news story one day about an off-duty police officer who had been murdered. And one of the suspects in the crime was a man who had the same name as him. So from your perspective, imagine that for a second. Somebody with the same name as you shows up in the news and they're wanted for an awful crime. So after hearing about the other Wes more in the news, Wes, the author, contacted him in prison, wrote him some letters, asked if he wanted to get together. And other Wes, who was in prison, he accepted the invitation. So it began a correspondence between the two men, which ultimately led to the book. Now, the book's structure... Um, First off, there is a brief introduction to it that I'm, I don't have any assignments for the introduction, but I want you to read it nevertheless because it will give you more insight as to how the book came about um, and some of the issues that the book deals with. So again, no assignment with the introduction, but please read it anyway. Uh, in the larger sense, the book is broken into three big sections. There is a part one, two, and three, but then it has eight smaller chapters. So your assignments that I'll be giving to you will be based on the chapters, not the three large parts. Um, each of those three large parts has, at the beginning of it, an italicized portion. Every one of those italicized portions you see at the beginning of those three parts is a conversation that took place between the two men. Now, to get a little more down into the weeds of it, so like I said, the book has got eight chapters to it, and it follows the stories of two men. So each chapter has two parts to it. One of those parts for each chapter is the author, Wes, telling his story. And then the other part of every chapter is the author, Wes, telling not his story, but the story of the other Wes Moore. It can be a little confusing at times, but there are some easy hacks and easy things to keep in mind to help you follow the structure of the book. Whenever the author, Wes, is speaking about himself, he uses first-person pronouns. He uses words like I and me and mine and our. Whenever the author is speaking not about himself but about the other Wes more, he refers to him by name as Wes. So just remember, when you hear the author talking about himself, okay, I, me, ours, mine, he uses those first-person pronouns. So pay attention to the words that he's using. The other things that you can pay attention to is the names of the family members to help you keep track of which man is being spoken of. Uh, 
on each of the assignments that I give you, I will indicate somewhere probably at the at the top of it somewhere, whether it's a quiz or a set of study questions, which West is being dealt with. Uh, so that's just some things to keep in mind going forward with the book. Um, some other things just to keep in mind. Let me look over my notes here. Um, oh, one of the things about the structure of the book is that, like I said, there's two parts to each chapter, and there's a there, there, there's a page break every time that happens. So every single one of the eight chapters, somewhere roughly in about the middle of it, where the transition goes from the author talking about himself to talking about the other West, there's a gray bar that goes all the way across the page. Uh, when you see that gray bar, that is how you know a transition is being made as to which man is being spoken of. And my assignments that I'll be giving for you, there's eight chapters. Each chapter has two parts, so there's going to be 16 total assignments for this book. And each one of the assignments will will begin and end based on those gray bars that indicate the separation and indicate the transition for you know one man being spoken of versus the other. So again, I'll break it down on my assignments, which man is being dealt with. Again, if you have any questions about anything, please feel free to email me. I have posted my email address several times in Google Classroom on the stream. So reach out to me. Okay, I might not be able to get to you immediately, but please send me an email. Uh, posting a message in the stream on Google Classroom isn't always the best way because I don't always get alerts that something's been posted there, so it could be several days that go, befo go by before I even know that it's there. Um, other than that, uh, after you watch this video, you should get started on the assignments, and enjoy.